Our hearts are made of it, let's take a chance Are you afraid of it? Mm. Let's close our eyes and make our own paradise Little we know of it, still we can try to make a go of it We might have been meant for each other To be or not to be Come on and let our hearts discover Let's fall in love, why shouldn't we? Fall in love, now is the time for it While we're still young, let's fall in love Thank you so much and welcome to The Musician Speaks. I'm Jade Leonard, your host. I seriously feel like the luckiest girl on television having you on my show. Now, can Probably I Probably the only girl on television. Am I? Or the only boy on television. Is television still there? This is just us yeah, out in the ether somewhere. Yeah. Um, now, I know that you do so much more than um, just rearranging classic songs that we all know and love. Um, you're also a very prolific songwriter. Can I talk you into playing a tune of yours for us? Um, well, seeing that it's here, I you should. should. Do you think you think we should? <laughs> I'd like to play something will come to light. Well, we uh, can't this, wait to hear it. This was written for a, a girl I was madly in love with at, at the time, and and uh, <laughs> but look, I'm no longer in love with her, so I'm going to play it backwards. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joking, Damo. <laughs>
Framed in My Garden Setting by Joe Kendamo. Put your hands together once more for yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What an incredible talent, and we're so lucky to have you. Are you, you talking on the about show. me now? Or? Yes. <laughs> I could be talking about me, but it's yeah. good that you clarify in this particular instance. So we know, well, I, I know, maybe not everybody does, but you're a wonderfully prolific pianist, but not just a pianist, a composer, arranger, an improviser. Um, and you are now spanning different genres, and I want to pick your brains about all of that stuff. Pick um, away. I want to talk to you about the multi-genre thing that you've got going on now. It's difficult enough to become a master in one genre and become, you know, to some extent acclaimed for that. Um, and you've not just done that in one genre, which is jazz, um, but you've now jumped a big fence over to the classical side and you've, your most recent album with Zoe Black um, has just She's received... an amazing violinist. Yeah, incredible. And you, you, both of you have just received an ARIA nomination in the classical uh, genre. Uh, no, I'm you. very, very proud of, mm. about that. And, and look, I, I don't know, I, I, to my knowledge, I, th I think it's the first time that um, in Australia that someone's been nominated for and won awards in, in jazz and then uh, the same in, in, in I would classical. have to say so. The, the worlds are so vastly different musically, you know, that, that you've bridged that gap. And I want to ask you, when did that happen? I assume you didn't just wake up one morning and decide to play Chopin, although I'd believe that you would if anybody did. Oh, look, <laughs> it I, would it, be it, you. It's funny because <laughs> uh, I was in Vince Jones's band and uh, we used to finish our gigs and I'd be sitting there playing Chopin studies and... Um, so you studied classical yeah. music. Well, I, st I studied. I, I started my career on a, on, a, on accordion at, at six. So I can't say that I'm classically trained. I gave up the accordion and took up piano, and basically listened to all the great jazz pianists and copied their solos and, and had my first piano lesson at the age of eighteen. Hmm. Which is very, very late. And, and There's at, hope at, for uh, us all. Uh, <laughs> um, but I've always been a bit of a closet classical musician and I hmm. uh, aesthetically I'm probably more aligned with that world than, than I am with, uh, with, with jazz. Although Why? I love the idea of jazz because even in my accordion days uh, the whole thing is linked with gypsy music where you take a melody and you're expected to change um, the original and improvise mm. and carry it somewhere somewhere else. How, how is it moving from the improvisation that is so inherent in jazz and the freedom I think that most of us enjoy in that style mm. to then the, the structure um, of the notated composition in classical music? Well, uh, improvisation is more akin to someone giving an impromptu speech and it seems like there's no preparation, but you have to uh, have a, you know, a huge repertoire of knowledge to be able to draw on to be so spontaneous. The classical uh, work that you're referring to is a little bit different too because I'm not strictly playing Chopin or recording it or, or, mm. or Bach. And so in some ways it's like um, taking Hamlet to, 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 to use the same example and creating my own Shakespearean language and sticking it in the original and, you know, making it so no one would notice when Shakespeare ends <laughs> and, I, and I begin. Mm. So it's still a very, very creative act. But is, is there criticism from within the classical world for doing that because you're sort of not Not that I'm aware of. Um, and if there is, uh, uh, you know, if I hear of any, I would ignore it because after all what I'm doing is something that is in keeping with the spirit of what Bach and Handel and Chopin and Mozart used to do. Mozart based his overtures of the magic flute on uh, one of his contemporaries' piano sonatas. So uh, in some ways I'm rekindling that, that, that tradition. So if anyone criticises me for that, they can go and get stuffed. I mean, they can, you know, they can, they can, cri they can criticise <laughs> what yeah. I do with it, but I don't accept a criticism <laughs> of, of the actual process. Yeah. Um, what's next for Joe Kendamo? Like, are we going to see you topping the reggae charts next, or <laughs> Joe Kendamo beatboxer? Uh, I don't think my hair will grow uh, <laughs> uh, that long. Uh, 
Look, I, I, I have a commission to write a double piano concerto for two pianos right. and an orchestra. Uh, Just a little and, project and, there. And, and that, that would probably keep me going to the end of my days. But, look, you never know, reggae, my... You know, <laughs> I can't wait. The, you know, I can't it, wait. I'll have that on repeat for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Kendama's reggae album coming at you real soon. <laughs> so if I can, I want to talk you into playing a few more songs with us um, love before, to. before the end of the show. Uh, we're going to hear now Joe Kendama playing one of his original tunes, Him For Her. Thank you. Thanks, go.
such an overwhelming pleasure. You've been watching The Musician Speaks. My guest on this episode has been the incomparable, the talentedly, amazingly Joe Kendamo. <laughs> Before I have the yummy privilege of singing uh, our finale piece for you for this episode, um, please, if you'd like to join the conversation uh, or e indeed join us here with our live studio audience, please visit themusicianspeaks.com. We also have a Facebook and Twitter page, so please feel free to come over and stalk us royally there. <laughs> Now, for something I guess a little more serious, I was so thrilled when Joe suggested that we sing this song for you. Uh, it's my mum's favourite song, so this is for you, Ma. Thank <laughs> you.